For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. To learn how small-minded people are these days, you almost... Well, one of the best places to find it, strangely enough, is in a space documentary. Now, you, you've seen my video series by now, maybe, called Ridley Rants Against Mars, which includes the video called Crappy Space Documentary is Crappy. You get an idea how passionate I am for my counterintuitive space thinking. But anyway, you find that the allegedly best minds in television and science come up with the crappiest ideas. For instance, the idea that humans would leave the solar system, you know, in order to colonize, they would need to leave the solar system to find a planet like Earth. This idea is so crazy, yes, it may eventually happen, but I mean, in anything like the near term, it's completely crazy. It's like a baby, it's like a fetus wanting to leave the womb so that it can go live in another womb. That is exactly what fetuses want, by the way, because they're, they don't know much. And it's the same way with humanity right now. I, I was just watching a documentary about uh, this idea of a neutron star, if a neutron star were to eat the solar system, right? It's, it, it could happen. And it's a great, it's really neat that they thought of this concept because most people don't, don't think about that. It's one of the few disasters that could happen that really would force uh, humans to leave the solar system or even really make it an appropriate thing to do in the next 200 years, unless I'm missing something. But anyway, even, even this documentary doesn't understand the lack of importance of Earth-likeness. The fact is, Earth's are not perfect places for humans. In all probability, the perfect place for a human is an orbital colony, or a colony that is man-made of some kind. All of the benefits of Earth, we think, can be recreated in space, just using today's technology. I'm pretty sure the movie Elysium uh, sort of plays out this concept. But there's just nothing particularly special about the idea of a colony that is maybe a mile across, a quarter mile wide or so. It's, it's, it's not particularly exotic. There are certain problems that might need to be overcome that we don't see yet, others that we do see, but, but probably the main problem is just NASA. You know, they make it, the, the federal government makes it so difficult to start a business or launch a rocket or launch something that's not a rocket, who knows exactly what needs to be put up there to protect you from radiation over the long haul? Is there something on Earth that we wouldn't have up there that we need, that we don't know about right now? Yes, maybe, but all of this dwarfs the kind of problems that you would be looking at on a Earth-like world, an allegedly Earth-like world, which would probably have stuff there that wants to kill you because it hasn't found humans yet and figured out that they kill you know that they can't you know that they're there at the top of the food chain many of these would be microbes the distance is so vast that again even if a neutron star were going to eat the whole solar system i personally wouldn't even look for an earth-like world very closely i would just look for what's the closest solar system that's got you know decent moons and asteroids on it Decent can be almost anything. I mean, our, the, the, the Earth's moon, practically created at random, which people have never lived on, is almost a perfect place for people to live. It's probably much better than the Earth. Maybe not quite as good as an orbital colony. It, it may be more of a place where you would collect materials to build an orbital colony. But the, the advantages to a moon surface or an orbital colony over Earth are many. And, and these advantages, these are over our Earth. I mean, think of the, how many advantages they would have over a, a quasi-Earth-like planet or, or something we find that we think is like Earth. First, a moon or an orbital colony has either no gravity or low gravity. Uh, with the case of the moon, what that means is you can get into space with a very small amount of energy. The, la the, the low gravity is an advantage in this respect. The lack of atmosphere is an advantage in this respect. Again, the problem with planets 
is that they have an atmosphere and high gravity. That's their problem. And that's why you don't want to go from one to another. You want to go from one to something that complements it, not something that tries to duplicate it. Planets are gravity wells. They are objects that pretty much guarantee you can't get something off of them cheaply. There will be improving technologies uh, on the Earth to get stuff off of the Earth, and the price will go dramatically down, but it will still be pretty high for a very long period of time, unless there's some wild change in technology and the government allows it. No such issue on an asteroid or the moon or a colony. You just you can very easily get from such places to other places. And I can't overstate how important that is and how much of a liability it is uh, on planets. The ability to leave easily, to control the weather, to control the location of your country, which is kind of what such a, such a colony would be, to control whether it's with other countries or not, to have free energy, another advantage of no atmosphere, to be able to essentially create new territory sort of from scratch to be there without killing any alien life forms that's probably important if you look at the way humans treat their environment and especially when they run into sentience they treat them even worse if you think of the way that some humans treated other humans uh, when they had slightly better technology over the, the, the centuries it's always been bad 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 we may not, as humans, be able to avoid the fact that we have an impact on our environment here. We could certainly avoid impacting creatures on a, a faraway star by not landing there. Hopefully, by the time people have the technology to do it, the race will have evolved a bit and have a little bit more of a vegetarian ideology where you, know, you want to you know, create as, as little damage to uh, other beings as possible. There's no need to colonize Earth-like worlds. So hopefully people won't do it. My gosh, I had written down like a paragraph of things to say, and I'm so wound up, I've been talking this whole time without even looking at the paragraph. But <clears throat> anyway, now I'll look at it. Oh yeah, another thing that kind of reminds me of how small-minded people are when they think about Earth-like worlds or look for Earth-like worlds. The, the, the probability is that life normally does not evolve on the surface of worlds like this one. I mean, it's probably out there, but it's just probably much more common to have it developing underground. Because the habitable zone is probably all the way from you know the orbit of Venus to the orbit of, of Saturn, based on what we've already seen. If things had gone a little different on Venus, that planet would be relatively habitable. And if things had gone, well, things have gone apparently uh, differently uh, uh, on one of Saturn's moons. They have found essentially liquid water underneath, and it's it spews out from inside the planet. The, the planet has a liquid water volcanoes. Uh, it's actually a moon in in the I hope I'm saying that right. A very small moon. They will put a something. Uh, they'll put a probe there sooner or later that will analyze uh, exactly what's in that water. Europa, of course, on uh, orbiting Jupiter, also has some of the same characteristics. They say that it looks like Enceladus, from what they can find, what they can see, it has basically all the characteristics that you would want in order to have life. In a sense, it's just like the Earth was for, I guess, a period of about a million years. There was a time when the Earth was an ice ball, and all, the only life was in the oceans. <laughs> but it's just in this one sort of randomly selected solar system, we've already found two worlds that probably, almost certainly, have the proper conditions for life to exist right now. I mean, you could probably send microbes there that would survive right now without any kind of changes. That says to me that worlds, at least habitable by aquatic beings, are extremely common. I mean, they haven't even ruled out Mars yet as possibly having life. There's even a slight possibility Venus could have it in the atmosphere, supposedly. It, ha it has a temperate zone. 
So the, the search for life is totally appropriate. Seems like a lot of fun. It's going to be fun to learn about. But the idea of you know colonizing an Earth-like world, that's just crazy. So many other things will come first and be better than that, that it may not ever even be desired. Once people really see what's going on out there. Again, I could be missing something. But if humans need a place to go that's not this solar system, I doubt they're going to need to look further than seven light years. The closest one, Alpha Centauri, might not work because it's a trinary system. I don't know if they've even found any planets there yet. Oh, and returning to this idea of the Goldilocks zone, uh, the idea that a planet has to be a certain distance from the sun. The, yeah, again, this may be the case for life to develop on the surface, but... In terms of orbital colonies, I've actually read that you could make an orbital colony as far out as the orbit of Pluto, or if you wanted to, you could make it even further. But it, I guess the orbit of Pluto is where you, that would be the limit is how far you could go if you wanted to keep your solar array about the same size as the colony. I kid you not, a solar array the same size as the colony would collect all the solar energy you need from the sun at the distance of Pluto. At least, that's what I've read. Correct me if I'm wrong. But th that brings up another element of space that is such an advantage over being Earthbound. And that is that there's a degree of predictability. It's not 100%. The sun changes a little bit. Planets' orbits change. Things happen to planets that aren't expected. But by and large, like on the moon, you can predict exactly what the surface temperatures will be uh, in the morning and what it will be in the evening what it will be at midday it's always almost 100% predictable and engineers love that it is so much easier I think for that reason to maintain you know uh, the, the ships they send to the moon as opposed to the ones they put on Mars where everything is just the, the temperatures are all over the place and again yes the temperatures do vary widely on the moon but they're predictable and there's no wind that's why when a, create, a, a crater is formed on the moon, a very small crater, maybe the size of your fingernail, it stays there for millions of years, just like that, in most cases. That's how peaceful the moon is. Yes, there's radiation. No, there's not the same gravity as Earth. Yes, that does have implications for people that are there for a long time. Oh, but one of those implications is you can fly. If you were to build a dome on the moon that was of sufficient size, you could strap on a pair of wings and be a bird. What's that worth? I would say that's worth about is I mean that that that's just as good as any e-ticket at Disney World. It's better. It surpasses even the best natural phenomenon on Earth that you could ever witness. I think. Anyway, some of the things that I am probably missing here would indicate that even I don't have an open enough mind. But if my layman's look can find so many holes in the official story of what space is going to be like, imagine how many more I haven't noticed. Imagine how much wilder that ride is really going to be when it does happen, and people are allowed access to it. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.